Hello, and welcome to Arlenology. This will be my first doll repaint video, and I'm starting with a large project, Live Dolls as U.S. States and Territories. And I'll be starting with Louisiana Mardi Gras. So I'll be starting with the great state of Louisiana and Mardi Gras 2020. Since I'm starting this whole project in Mardi Gras, I figured this was only appropriate. So my doll is a live doll. They have gorgeous acrylic eyes. They come in several different skin tones and they have painted on short hair. In the back of the head, there is a hole and that is for applying different wigs and fashion accessories and holding them onto the head. We'll be removing that skull cap that has that hole, but first we're going to start with some acetone, 100% pure acetone. Mine is the Walgreens brand and it works just fine. And as we remove this paint, it'll be just the hair that we're working on at this point because I don't want any of the acetone to get into the acrylic eyes and fog them up. So now that the acetone is removed, we're going to cut the crown of the head and take that cap off so that we can get to the acrylic eyes and remove them. These dolls are an older variety. They came from the late 90s and early 2000s. They were available at Target and I'm not sure which brand they were. I think they're MGA, but I'm not positive. And they came with very cool accessories and were a great choice for people who like the Barbie dolls but wanted more variety and more articulation and movement. Just thinking about removing the skull cap from somebody is kind of disturbing, but fun. So here's our crown piece and we're going to set that aside. We'll glue that back on after we replace the eyes at the end of the face up. So inside you can see the vinyl that coats the back of the eyes to hold them in place. And we're going to remove those vinyl pieces so that we can get the eyes out of the way. Delightful is right, this is a gruesome hobby. I did try several times to remove these eyes from the front or through the front and it just doesn't work. You have to push the round eyes back through the oval eye hole, push them to the back and take them out the back. And the second eye on this one just gave me all kinds of grief, could not get it out, so I did not record the entire process, just part of the cutting away. Now the reason this collection is made with Live Dolls is because I came across this absolutely wonderful deal on eBay and got 57 Live Dolls to add to my collection of already probably 20 or 30. So I have more than enough dolls to use. Now the eyes are removed and I've also gone through the back and removed some of the excess vinyl that's behind the eyes so that I can easily get them back in place. And now with the acetone, we come back onto the face. And please be careful. I managed to have too much acetone and got it onto the hard body of the doll. And since these are a hard plastic body, 
they melt with contact with acetone. And I did not realize what had happened until I removed my finger from her neck and had pieces of the neck stuck to me. And you'll see that coming up here very shortly. And there's where the hard plastic was stuck to my hand. And you can see some slivering on the shoulder of the doll. Which I quickly wiped again with acetone to remove the slivers. And now coming in with the baby wipe to get a neutral cleansing process on there to hopefully stop the chemical reaction. Plus it prepares the body of the doll for the matte sealer. I use Mr. Super Clear. And now just showing that there was a little damage to the neck but it's hardly noticeable and we'll be doing some buffing of the body anyway. So with the nail buffer, I'm taking off the sheen, the, the shine of the hard plastic on the body. I want it to match the finish of the face, which is the, the dull matte finish. And I will be applying pastels and uh, pencils to the body as well. So I want to make sure that I have a good surface for doing that and a good surface for Mr. Super Clear to stick to because I will be blushing. There are also some seams in the hard plastic that I was removing as well. So now that her body is all buffed and ready to go, we're showing the articulation at the waist, the knees, elbows, shoulders, wrists, and feet. And Mr. Super Clear is extremely toxic. All of the instructions for it are in Japanese, but you can download um, English instructions. And here I'm showing the products that I use for the face up. I have Mungio Soft Pastels, um, Artist Loft, which is a Michaels brand uh, watercolor pencils for starting. I am going to be upgrading to um, Derwent. I always use gloves to keep my oils from my hands off of the doll's skin. Keep a pencil sharpener handy at all times in two different sizes for the different pencils I have. And use a kneaded eraser to shape the pastels. And this is my first doll repaint video that I've done. Not my first repaint, but my first repaint video. And my work surface was made a little smaller by the uh, angle of the camera and the accessories that I have available at this time. When I have my new studio, things will be much better. I did try recording with my iPhone. I think that I will be switching to the cameras video capabilities. And here I'm just applying some basic color. I want her skin tone to be very light. We're going for a Marie Antoinette kind of style and back then they used different chemicals to bleach their skin to make it whiter. So just getting some soft blushing and shadows. And they do have very nice ears on these dolls, so I wanted to make sure to get some of those highlights in there too. A little color under the chin, under the lip, and under the nose. And mainly around the eyes, we want to show some depth there, not just a flat looking surface. If you hear those sounds under my desk, that is my French Bulldog, Ralph, and he is not quiet, but he is my constant companion, and he likes to make his presence known even though he can't hear it. He is deaf. And they also have very nice collarbones on these dolls, so I like to do a little definition there just to bring out that structure. Blushing will be applied to the breast area, the shoulders in any of the uh, joints, 
just again a very slight blushing to keep her skin very light. It doesn't look like a lot of color is going down just because of the type of lighting that I used here, but there is color and you'll see me taking a cotton swab to kind of bring down some of the particles of the pastels so that they don't get everywhere else and just kind of lighten those tones. All of this blushing is done in several different layers and each layer is sealed with another spray of Mr. Super Clear. Please use a respirator mask and other safety equipment when using this highly toxic spray. Now we're just blending out some of the color on the face, just again to maintain that really light color profile. I think this is a point where I was trying to apply white with the brush, but it just wasn't working. So yes, this this is, and I am now taking the pastel directly to the doll's skin. Another mistake that I made here is don't make the lines that are too abrupt and harsh. Um, do try and make the highlighting a little more blended as you put it down. It took a little work to blend this out and make it a smooth transition. Worked out very well for the nose and the lips, though. I have to remember we don't want war paint, we want nicely blended colors. So now I'm taking a light brown pencil and just adding in short curved strokes for individual eye eyebrow hairs. And I'll be doing this with several colors just to get a natural depth to it. But I still want to keep these very light because my imagination tells me that this lady was blonde before she had her big poofy wig for the New Orleans festival. shaping a little bit with the kneaded eraser. And these dolls do have very exaggerated creases above the eyes, so it's very easy to get those lines in there and emphasize them for the repaint. If creases at the top of the lids and at the eyelash line. And now it's time for the lips. I'm using a Jane Davenport um, collapsible paintbrush to apply the pastels to the lip. It's a very soft brush.
Now at this point I think I've already taken a brown pencil and just highlighted the or put some color into the nostrils and along the cleft of the lip. And now you can begin to see a little bit of that depth under the eyes. Now I'm going for my second color in the eyebrows, and this is a, they call the color carmine red, but it's more like an Indian red, so it's a brown red. And then I'll also go back in with a white pencil to kind of lift and define the eyebrows, and then go back in again with a darker brown, um, giving that natural transition of color that real eyebrows would have. I'm also adding some small lashes above the lash line, um, even though she'll be getting artificial lashes. It's just something I like to do to kind of add another layer of depth to the project. And a little more highlighter for the cleft area. I like to keep these pencils very sharp so they do have the um, individual hair look to them when they've been applied to the doll. Yes, Ralph, we hear you cleaning your feet. And a little darker layer of some more lashes, just again for that depth behind the artificial lashes. And for this layer, I'm going in with a black pencil just to give the painted on eyeliner look just a very slight cattail or cat's eye at the end. This will help the, the eyes to just the color for them just to really pop. very excited about this project. There's going to be a lot of dolls, but each state has its own representation. and It's just going to be so much fun. And now on to the hair. What I've gone with is a very stark, bright white color, and I've already made the yarn wefts. In retrospect, I would use a different glue to seal or set the yarn wefts, but I chose my Elmer's uh, all-purpose extra strong and it uh, comes out a little crunchy so it's not as malleable as I would like it to be. But it is very effective. 
If anyone's looking for tutorials on how to make doll wigs, Mozekito has very good information and lots of different styles. And now I'm just using hot glue to glue the wefts directly onto the doll's head. And this is my first doll repaint, so please don't judge me too harshly. I uh, did end up getting a little bit off camera in a few shots. So what I'm going to do is apply these wefts all the way around and kind of leave them opened out and then the center of the head will get a large clump of the um, extra yarn that was combed out of these wefts just to make that big rounded hairstyle on top and more of a, a puff on top of their head. And then all the hair will be pulled around that and the end of it will be twisted into a small bun at the very top and a gold ribbon from a Christmas present will be put in there. And you can see here I applied eyeshadow um, in a glitter paste, so beautiful golden glitter to go with her dress. Actually pretty excited how that turned out. I also applied that glitter paste to a pair of shoes from Elena of Avalor and to these gold crown earrings that I happen to find in all my doll stash. And the curls are from a package of also very white hair that I got at a garage sale and I just took a couple of those curls and pinned them into the head. And the pattern that I used for this, that was a very brief glimpse there, is the Simplicity Diva Doll Collection, and it's 7025, and it has the large Marie Antoinette dress on the front of it in purples and greens. And this is the support for the skirt from that pattern. And this wraps around the doll's waist and just helps the skirt keep the bell shape and stay out to the sides as it's supposed to. And these beads I got from the dollar store. They're tiny little beads on regular size necklaces, so I was able to make several of these uh, beads for her to throw out as she's in the parade to throw out into the crowd. And the colors of Mardi Gras are all the royal colors, the royal emerald, the royal purple, and gold. That's just to show the kind of excess that we live in our daily lives as opposed to what the church wants us to live during Lent, which is a more uh, subdued lifestyle. And this is the piece de resistance. This is made by my friend Nancy White. Um, I asked her because she is an artist for masks and sells them on Bourbon Street during the parade time um, in a shop there and she came up with these incredible incredible masks and lined so that the makeup on the doll wouldn't uh, be rubbed off this one had a strap around it but because of the hairstyle that i went with on this doll she can't actually wear it without pushing it back and flattening it so i um, am going to put that on a stick and she'll be carrying that to place in front of her face And now we're just tying on that uh, skirt support and I'll be showing you pictures here of the bodice and the skirt very briefly and then the big reveal. If you like this video, please feel free to click like and please subscribe. I am trying to build my channel. This is brand new for me, so hopefully I'll have a lot of supporters out there in my friends and all of my viewers. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you Babette. Babette is our representation for the state of Louisiana and Mardi Gras. And 
thank you again to everybody for watching this video. Hopefully you've made it all the way through and you'll have a chance to like and subscribe to my posts for future updates. And please also follow me on Arlenology on Facebook. Thank you and au revoir.